as seen in my previous video, there's multiple options for you to get a server up and running. And as mentioned, DigitalOcean is my favourite. So I'm just going to show you how to get a server up and running on DigitalOcean. And it's extremely easy to do. I'll pop a link in the description to DigitalOcean, and that's an affiliate link. And that'll give you some credit, so you can try this out completely free. And then if you don't like it, you can obviously close your account. So after you've signed up, come over to the left-hand side of the page here and click Create New Project. And these projects are basically just a virtual folder where you can create servers in there and group them together. So we're just going to call this project Server Ninja. You can give it a description if you want. And then for a purpose, you can do whatever you please. DigitalOcean will give you recommendations on what you pick. So we're just going to say just trying out DigitalOcean for now. And then we're just going to click Create the Project. And you can see now that's created the project for us. So the next thing we need to do is create a virtual machine or as DigitalOcean calls them, droplets. So if you come down here and click get started with a droplet, and now you can pick a distribution to install on the server. So in my previous video, I mentioned about downloading an Ubuntu ISO to install on the server. Now another pro of using something like DigitalOcean or another cloud provider is they provide the installs ready to go for you. So here you can see the different operating systems you have to install, and also in the drop down the different versions. And as mentioned in the previous video, it's better to stick with the LTS. So we're just going to leave that as it is. Next, standard plans are absolutely fine for what we're doing. And then here you can pick how powerful you want your server. And now as because we're just playing around, the bottom droplet is perfectly fine for us. So if we come over here to the left and we see it's only going to cost us $5 a month. Or like I said in my previous video, you only get charged per hour. So you can just spin this up, try a couple of things and then just delete it. And it'll only cost you 0.007 cents an hour. Let's select that option. Now we're not covering block storage in this video, but that is something I'll be coming to later. And then the data center region, you just pick whatever's closest to you. So I'm in the UK, so it makes sense to me to pick London. Now these other options, we don't really need these. So we're just gonna leave these for now. And I'll cover these in more detail in a later video. Then finally, we just need to add our SSH key. So now if you don't have an SSH key set up, or you don't even know what an SSH key is, don't worry, I've got a video just for you, walking through the basics of SSH, and I'll link that in the description. So go watch that, create your SSH key, and then come back here and click New SSH Key, and then add the SSH key into DigitalOcean. As you can see here, I've already got some added onto DigitalOcean, so I'm just gonna click my desktop computer here, and this will add the SSH key into the server for me so I can connect into it when it's done. The host name, you can change this to something more relevant to you, but often I just leave that as it is. And then all you need to do is just create the droplet. Now this starts the creation process, and the thing with DigitalOcean is extremely quick. It'll usually take less than a minute to have your server up and running. So I've skipped forward a little bit here, but as you could probably tell when you did it on your computer, it took less than a minute. Now the server's up and running, and it's given us an IP address. So let's SSH into this machine and just check it out. Now I'm just going to run SSH. And again, if you don't understand what's happening here, watch my SSH video first, and then come back so you can follow along with what's happening. So we're going to type SSH in the space, and then we're going to log in as the root user, because that is currently the only user that is on the system, because it's a brand new system. So we're just going to type root, and then an at, and then paste in our IP address. And then we're just going to hit enter on this. Now the first time you log into a new server, it's going to ask you to authenticate the host. So it's basically saying, we've not seen this host before. Are you sure you want to connect to it? Do you trust it basically? And we're just going to type yes to this and then hit enter. Now if we just scroll up a little bit here, you can see now it's added our server IP into the known hosts. So now our computer now trusts this host and it won't ask us for confirmation again. As you can see from the rest of the screen here, we've now logged into our server. So the next step after creating and logging into this server is to just do an initial server setup. So this is just some basic stuff that you should do every time you start up a new server. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.